Test one, two. There you go. Great. Sorry, I guess there was a difficulty with the sound, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewind a little bit here. Sorry. Now, my name is Connor Sheehan, and I'm an e-commerce consultant here at Cantina. Uh, I wanted to walk you through today some of our latest insights on e-commerce, in particular how you should be reprioritizing your efforts of your web store in order to keep your customers buying, coming back, and happy. So let's jump straight in. Now is the time to evolve your web store to meet the rapidly changing needs of your customers. Many of the big players are already trying to shake things up, but what is it the web stores should be focused on and why? What is it that customers are really looking for? The other question is why now? Well, if you look around the web, it's, it's aging and maturing very quickly. Users are getting pampered with fast, cutting-edge websites that work across more devices than they could imagine. They are coming along with features that most web stores haven't even heard of, and many e-commerce sites are showing their age. A lot of them are actually using conventional web shopping carts that date back to the mid-90s, and it's about time to catch up. The in-store and online shopping experience are increasingly colliding. Customers aren't thinking of them as separate anymore. It's not uncommon for someone to go into a store to try something on, snap a photo of it, and then later purchase it when they're out with their friends who tell them, oh my god, that looks really awesome on you. These, quote, omni-channel shoppers should see web stores and the brick-and-mortar stores as two faces of the same coin. They should have the same products. They should have the same experience. More importantly, these kind of shoppers have been shown to spend 76% more than in-store only customers. So today I'm going to walk you through some of the e-commerce e worlds as it stands now, today, and explain what priorities customers are really looking for. Last week, Cantina has produced a, an infographic regarding rethinking e-commerce as today's topic is on. Uh, one of the first things that we touched on is mobile. It's, it's real importance, and I'm sure that you've heard it before. You'll hear it again. Mobile is important. Yes, it's here to stay. Yes. But I want to take you through some recent stats from this past holiday season. Uh, it was pretty impressive on Black Friday when, over the year prior, the, there was a 258% uptick in mobile traffic across the, the whole mobile space and 40% of the total online traffic was made up on mobile devices, both phones and tablets alike. If you're talking about sales, which obviously we need to talk about bottom line here, the purchases were up 186% over the prior year, which made up a total of 22% of all online sales. That's almost a quarter. And if you want even higher stats, you can take a look at Walmart's traffic from mobile, which this year made up more than half of its Black Friday online traffic. The second thing that we really want to focus on here is speed and performance. It may sound boring and too engineering focused, but don't be fooled. They are absolutely critical to success. 18% of shoppers are abandoning their carts due to, to slow loading pages. 47% of users expect their sites to load in under two seconds. And 52% of users claim that a page load time is a key factor in customer loyalty. It's what keeps them coming back. It's what keeps them buying. Your site absolutely needs to be performance. The shopping, shopping experience, experience isn't, isn't just, just a matter, matter of what it what looks like, like, what it feels like online. online. It's, it's the, the full experience, experience of purchasing, purchasing something, of interacting, interacting with anyone, anyone over either, either chat, chat or the, or the phone. phone. It's... it's these improvements aren't, aren't just, just your web, web design or web, web, web performance. performance. The stats, the stats show, show that 71% of people, people expect, expect free shipping. 37% of customers, customers expect, expect free returns. returns. They, they, they don't, don't want to pay for a product. product. Sorry, Sorry, they, they do, do want to pay for a product. They, they don't, don't want to pay for a transportation. transportation. And they, and they do, do want to be secure in this fact that if they don't get the product they're looking for, they'll still be happy. So, as I just said before, we need to build for mobile, we need to build for performance. They expect them to be fast, and it's been proven time and time again. 
LA-based marketing strategies group, The Search Agency, put forward a mobile experience scorecard to evaluate Fortune 100 e-commerce sites on their best practices regarding mobile experiences. As you can see in the list, number one, first off, the top three in this list are of highest priority. Number one is a load time of under one second. Number two is a responsive web design that can be viewed across all devices, not just phones, not just tablets, but scaling to every device that a user would see it on. Number three, having a store locator above the fold. Should you have retail stores, people need to be able to find out where they are. Number four, a search box above the fold. It's one of the primary ways of navigating websites these days. Categories have gotten so large that Searching is just a much more direct route to get to the product that you're really looking for. Number five, at least three social media buttons should be on the site. Large, prominent, and easy to use so that you can get to either Facebook or Twitter or wherever you can deliver your, your thoughts and get feedback from the brand directly. Number six, which as you've noticed I've, I've crossed out, was a suggestion by, again, the search agency that an Apple Store app download prompt should show up on the mobile ex experience of your website. We tend to, dis to disagree here as we don't want to create blockers on websites. We don't want to make sure, we don't want to force users who show up to your site to have to download an app or block them from being able to see the site that they intended to go find. And number seven is a click to call button or number. For customer service purposes, people need to know how to get in touch with you quick, easy, and not have to remember or write down a number. What's interesting is that most of the Fortune 100 aren't implementing responsive web design and aren't loading in under one second. There needs to be more focus on mobile and performance. These things are expected of all e-commerce sites from a mobile device. You have to build for mobile. Google has a say in this as well. They recommend that responsive web design is the preferred means of delivering mobile sites. They've also said that sites should be optimized for under one second. The quote, as I read, we must deliver and render above the fold content in under one second, which allows the, the user to begin interacting with the page as soon as possible. Now, this sounds great, and obviously we can agree that, yeah, fast is good, fast is awesome but things get a little bit hairier when you start looking at what that one second breakdown can turn out to be. 600 milliseconds or 60% of your one second window is spent with 3G overhead. Things like DNS lookup, TCP connections, HTTP re request and response, they're not gonna change. That's, that's glued by the 3G networks. All you have to work under is the remaining 400 milliseconds. You have 40% of that time to create your response, and then render on the client. Fortunately, as this shows, above the fold content it is the high, highest priority. The rest of the page doesn't necessarily need to load in that amount of time, but people do need to begin to interact with the content on there. You need to build for performance. I'm to read a question come in. Do you, are there any studies about that one second milestone and how that might affect business? Actually, that's a very good point. It leads right into my next slide here about Amazon. Um, it's not directly related to the one second mark, but they've proven through A-B testing that every 100 milliseconds more in the page load, they drop 1% in revenue. This was loading the exact same pages with the exact same code and putting in a forced 100 millisecond increase in time. And they, dropped, they lost a whole 1% of the revenue. Um, what's kind of amazing about that is that's a tenth of the time that things need to load. So you can see that building for performance is absolutely, without a doubt, important to e-commerce success. Similar studies have been done using by Google, Shopzilla, Yahoo, and Firefox, all finding the same results that users are heavily preferring their sites to load very quickly, as quickly as possible. There's a, another question, is there a priority of the search bar above the over the fold content? Yes, 
again, this was according to the LA-based agency, the search agency, and they did double check to make sure that all search boxes were above the fold, easy to find, and one of the first and foremost ways to navigate the websites. Any other questions? That's good for now. Great, thank you. Um, again, keep these questions coming in. I'll be sure to stop and answer them as we go. And we'll also leave some time at the end for any closing remarks and closing questions. Um, getting on here, I wanted to do a quick case study on a recent redesign done by Walmart Canada. They decided to go with a new responsive build and did a lot of research before they led into their new design. So what's interesting is when you typically speak of responsive design, you often hear the phrase mobile first, suggesting that sites be built starting from the phone and working up. Interestingly, Walmart chose to do a tablet first approach after analyzing their large amounts of traffic coming from tablets. They decided to target customers who shop at home on these devices first and foremost. They found that conversions and average order value were ho much higher on tablets than they were on the small screens. So they decided to, again, go with a responsive redesign, and the stats kind of show it all. They had a 35% increase in performance and a 20% increase in conversions and a whopping 98% increase in mobile orders. So along with the, the classic benefits of having a single code base, they've clearly impacted their bottom line just using this new responsive redesign. Through heavy stress testing throughout the whole development process, they were able to build for performance using caching, efficient code, and uh, icon fonts to make things easy to load. And I think these numbers kind of say it all. You, mobile is, without a doubt, absolutely important, and making it performant on those platforms is critical. But the user experience goes beyond the screen. It's not just about creating something that's fast, creating something that's mobile. It's, it's about creating a whole shopping experience for your customers. It's about creating a brand and creating a personality. What I would like to do now is take you on a tour of the current landscape of e-commerce. I'm going to focus specifically on a handful of brands that have been redefining what e-commerce means to them. They're experimenting, trying new things, and succeeding. The first, which many of us know, is Warby Parker. Uh, they've done a fantastic job at branding in particular. It goes through their whole existence, pushing pushing to pr provide affordable, stylish, classic glasses to consumers. They've started online as uh, a brand to be able to reach out to as many users as possible and have recently also adopted showrooms and retail locations where people can go try on some glasses, speak to their sales representatives, and figure out what works best for them. They're heavily engaged with their customers and have made a commitment to answering every phone call, every email, Facebook post, and tweet. And they also impl implemented a home try-on program where I can, for instance, go on the site, get five free frames to try on for five days, make up my mind, and send back whatever I don't like. This way I can be sure that I'm getting exactly what I want and I don't need to feel any discomfort if I don't like them. They're reinventing the way we buy glasses and it's tending to really disrupt the whole market. Next up, Trunk Club. They implemented a similar try before you buy mentality, but more importantly they brought a kind of classic concept of personalized shopping to the web with uh, a tailor who will call you and interview you they will hand select clothing that will work for all their customers. Their expert resources supply the quote, right product for their customer and save time in trying to shop around, figuring out what works best for you and what fits best for you. Now, the try before you buy in this case is especially interesting because when you're talking about clothing that you may not be picking out on your own but have someone else pick up for you, having it sent to you without any charge to your card is pretty fantastic as you just send back whatever you don't like for whatever reason with no guilt whatsoever and really customers have nothing to lose in trying it. They're doing a great job of creating confidence 
for their customers in their purchases. Next up is a store called ModCloth. So ModCloth does some things really well and it's tending to be kind of a, a classic apparel store. But what you can see as we scroll down here is that they really killed it on user reviews and user photos. People highly, highly value quality user comments and reviews and they took it very seriously. They were tried on some clothes only to find out that the supposed medium was way too large. What if you had an easy way to find out how it fit people similar to you who purchased it? ModCloth not only features real user photos, as can be seen in the, in the view right here, but they also have reviews that are perfectly detailed. Users can leave their sizes into photos so you can have a better sense of how it might fit on you. The community works together to create a better place to shop and feel comfortable and confident in the purchases to make sure that they are indeed what you want to buy. Again, another case of creating high confidence in your purchases for their users. Nature Box. So obviously we've been talking a lot about apparel stores who have been kind of pushing the envelope more than others, but it's not just apparel who's in this industry. In fact, this is uh, a website built on shipping you high quality, wholesome, delicious snacks. So they ship healthy snacks on a monthly basis. You choose what size you want and what foods you want. And interestingly, what you can do is request surprises in your box. The notion of these curated products is really starting to take off online. To avoid the paradox of choice, people are relying on brands they trust to give them quality products. Juanilo. While this kind of funny name may roll off the tongue a bit weird, what you can easily remember it as is a shortening of the words want, need, love. They have been trying to bring stores together from all over into a single social platform. Everything is posted by the users. Everything is purchasable. Made for those who want to learn more about what their friends are, are buying and where they're shopping. You have, let's say you have a friend that knows, for instance, shoes inside and out. You need to know where are they going? What, what brands do they trust? This is the place to find out. They also have a very interesting browsing mechanism. When you go to the site, there are no categories. You simply enter in a search or click on a featured product right in the, the home screen. When you get to a product, as can be seen right here, below you'll see a lot of tiles of similar products, products that people have also saved or viewed. And when you click on one of these, you will see another product along with another listing of similar products. As can be imagined, this ends up with quite the rabbit hole of style. So what's, what's most interesting about this site is that they really took the, the classic shopping cart and browsing mentality and turned it on its head into something totally, extremely new. Now this is even a, a bit more off the, the beaten path, but Glam Grab has also pushed social shopping to a bit more of an extreme. In fact, they brought their store straight to Facebook. Um, it's a great example of how they can directly engage with their customers in their local environment. Your friends can see what you bid on and when, when you bid on it and see that it's something cool. Their auctions, as can be seen here, create a live sense of urgency and customers can really feel connected. So when you scroll down and see a product that was recently posted, all you have to do is comment grab and then check out at an additional page. Many brands have a social media presence, but few are really pushing the envelope on what they can accomplish on these various platforms. Fortunately, there are people like Glam Grab who really want to start pushing that envelope and see what exactly they can do. So the Summation of this is that there are a lot of things. You can go with social, you can go with try before you buy, you can go with monthly subscriptions, but it's not all going to be right for you. It's not a checklist. You need to listen to your users. You need to try new things. 
You need to find out what works best for your product, for your business, and for your audience. In preparation for today's webinar, we've been running a brief survey of customers who shop on the web. As can be seen, they were asked to rank a set of common e-commerce features. To be safe, the initial list was presented in a random order for every visitor, and they were asked to rank and submit them. The survey results are as seen here. The, the final ranked values, as summed up by all the users who've pushed these results to us, are that free shipping is number one. User comments and reviews are number two. Number three is free returns, followed by checkout as guest and customer relations. Further down the list, we have email communications and sale alerts and social discounts and referral programs, similar to refer your friend and get $10 off your next purchase. So the top three things in this list, shipping, comments, and returns, really reinforce some of the data that we've seen earlier. These three together collectively add to a better sense of confidence in an online storefront. You can see people approve the product, you can get it without any overhead, and you can send it back without any questions should you have any problems. More interesting is further down the list. Despite every web store having a newsletter, people seem to not heavily value it. Perhaps the plethora of daily email alerts have watered down the effectiveness of such means of communication. And I'm sure some things might be floating around your heads, but this, this may not be the same list for your particular website. It may just be entirely different. There's only one way to know. You have to listen to your customers. One of the, the easy ways you can do that is by looking in your search box. If you keep track of what people are searching for, you can then look and notice that they're using certain terminology. They're often seeing certain pages be that product pages or pages regarding things like free shipping, free returns, and other policies. So we had a question come in um, sure. a little while ago. Uh, how do people find out about some of these companies, so NatureBox and Trunk Club? So it's a question about discoverability, that, particularly in these kind of narrower, narrower niche kind of uh, plays. That's a good question. Um, as with some of the things like Glam Grab in particular, they, they're social by nature. They lend themselves to immediately having their customers telling other people about their products. Um, by creating these brands, you can also create a really good word of mouth advertising. And I'm sure that's on top of quite a large marketing push as well. Cool. So. Let me just wrap up some of today's talk with uh, some takeaways. Number one, you need to focus on a great shopping experience. That's first and foremost by far. This isn't just about having a site. This isn't just about having a store. It's about having a brand. and It's about having an experience for your customers that they can enjoy and feel confident in. Number two, build for mobile. Use responsive web design. That goes without saying these days. It's it's 2014, and we need to start taking these things seriously. If you don't have a mobile site, a, a site that's responsive right now, and can be seen on all devices, then you're going to be falling behind by the wayside. Number four, build for per, sorry, number three, build for performance. Optimize your site to load in under one second. That's not an easy thing to do, but we all need to strive for that. It's going to affect the bottom line without a doubt and it will push people to your competitors if they're able to beat you on that metric. Number four, remember that the user experience goes beyond the screen. It's not just about what they're seeing, it's about what they're doing, what they're buying, what they're looking for. And number five, to wrap it all up, is listen to your customers. They will tell you what they need and they will go elsewhere if they can't find it with you. So we are Cantina, we're a digital agency that plans, designs, and builds connected experiences and product innovations. We're here to help. Please feel free to contact me at connor at cantina.co or Twitter at connorshees.